Keeping Up With The Crawlies. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things we need to see in the Downton Abbey movie. I've never been called a liberal in my life, and I don't intend to start now. Before we begin, we publish new content every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look at character and story arcs that should be explored in the big screen adaptation of Julian Fellow's acclaimed television series. We must make her feel it is her duty to save Downton. But how? What can we do? Number 10, Tom in Love Again. It seems rather unlikely, a revolutionary chauffeur. Maybe. But I'm a socialist, not a revolutionary. And I won't always be a chauffeur. Despite coming from two completely different social backgrounds, Tom Branson and Lady Sybil couldn't deny their passionate feelings for each other. You'll have a very different life from the one you might have lived, but if you're sure, it's what you want. I am. The Crawleys reluctantly accepted this union over time, but their love story ended in tragedy, with Sybil dying following childbirth. Tom was able to confide in Lady Mary, who shortly after giving birth lost her husband, leading some viewers to believe that they may become an item. So what are we to do? Their relationship was kept platonic, though, with Tom helping Mary cope with her grief and start anew. Where Mary eventually remarried, Tom remained single when the series wrapped up. However, based on a flirtation he shared with Edith's co-worker Laura Edmonds, Tom just may find love again. I'm glad no one blames me for encouraging her to work. We like strong women here. Do you really? I can assure you, we like them very much indeed. Number 9. Edith and Marigold Living Happily Often overshadowed by her older sister, the middle Crawley daughter was essentially the Jan Brady of the family. Something happening in this house is actually about me. After getting left at the altar and having to hide her illegitimate daughter's true parentage, life finally threw Edith a bone towards the end game. I love the Café de Paris. How did you know to choose it? I knew we'd love the same things. <laughs> Not only did she get Marigold back, but Edith also settled down with Herbert Pelham, aka Birdie. Through her marriage, Edith actually gained a higher title than Mary, not to mention a bigger house. Just as Anna and Bates got their happy ending, the series left Edith on a high note. Hopefully the film doesn't undo all the progress she's made and continues to see her thrive. Everything's coming up, Edith. Number 8. Memorable New Characters While we're eager to catch up with the Crawley clan, the film will also introduce a few new characters who may shake things up at Downton Abbey. The most notable addition is Oscar nominee Imelda Staunton, who in real life is married to Mr. Carson himself, Jim Carter. I do want to be stuck with you. Also joining the cast are Tony nominee Geraldine James, Simon Jones from The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, David Haig from Killing Eve, Tuppence Middleton from Sense8, and Kate Phillips from Peaky Blinders. Just as characters like Lady Rose kept the series fresh during its later years, these newcomers can potentially do the same. Number 7. A Significant Other for Barrow Throughout the series, Thomas Barrow shifts from being one of the most unlikable residents at Downton Abbey to one of the more empathetic characters. Exclusively looking out for himself, this servant isn't above blackmailing, backstabbing, and manipulation. Behind his cold persona, though, Barrow is also a vulnerable and lonely human being. When you're like me, Mr. Carson, you have to read the signs as best you can because no one dares speak out. As a gay man living in a period where homosexuality was a punishable offense, we can see why Barrow is so guarded. To change me. To make me more like other people. Other men. Whenever he does let his defenses down, he always winds up getting crushed. Because of all there is between us. There's nothing between us except my fist if you don't get out. By the show's conclusion, Barrow at least secured his position as Downton Abbey's butler. But it would be great if the movie saw him find happiness with someone else. Well, Barrow, would you like to be butler here? Certainly, my lady. Number 6. Servants Rebelling at the Abbey An aristocrat with no servants is as much use to the county as a glass hammer. Change is one of the central themes in Downton Abbey. Why didn't you put the lights on? I dared not Well, it's electricity, not the devil's Abbey work. I'll have to get used to it sooner or later. Between 1912 and 1925, we saw the Crawley family tackle significant social change, as well as the changes brought on by events like World War I. At the end of the day, however, the Crawleys have always had a staff of loyal servants around to handle the cooking, cleaning, and dressing. 
If the film really wants to challenge the status quo, we could see Downton Abbey staff go on strike, demanding better pay and working conditions. They promised me promotion. She said they'd get a new kitchen maid and I'd be Mrs. Patmore's assistant. Well, if they really promise, you should withdraw your services. What do you mean? Like, go on strike? This would provide especially compelling character arcs for Mr. Carson and Mrs. Hughes, who have devoted most of their lives to service and could finally explore new horizons together. Number 5. Daisy Pursuing a New Career One of the youngest servants at Downton Abbey, Daisy Mason, is sometimes torn between doing what's expected of her and going after what she wants. Although she starts out as a kitchen maid, her ambitions begin to shine through as the series goes on. I feel as if I've been down a coal hole and someone's opened the lid and brought me into the sunlight. The final season sees Daisy pass her exams, opening the door to new possibilities. You passed every paper with high marks. Oh, Daisy, that's wonderful news. In the finale, however, she's still working as an assistant cook under Mrs. Patmore and moving in with Andy on the farm. I've decided a lot of things. But I won't tell you all of them now. We'd love to see Daisy pursue a new career in the film. Considering how far she's come already, it'd be a shame if Daisy spent the rest of her life stuck in Downton Abbey's kitchen. Number 4. Thoroughly Modern Mary While not quite as modern as Sybil, Mary has established herself as a pioneering woman. Decades before the sexual revolution was officially underway, she slept with Mr. Pamuk out of marriage, slept with Lord Gillingham after her husband died, and used contraception. I have to be sure there aren't any consequences. She also helped Downton Abbey persevere through its many financial struggles and ushered in a new era with her bob haircut. You've made me feel very strong. When we last saw Mary, she tied the knot with second husband Henry Talbot and announced her pregnancy. I'll never ask for another thing again, I swear. Yes, you will. And you're going to get it, too. What? You for sure? I'm quite sure. It'll be interesting to see if their marriage lasts, as actor Matthew Good reportedly only has a minor role in the film. Whatever the future holds, we hope Mary continues to be a trailblazer. There they go, a new couple in a new world. Number three, the kids grown up. Daddy. Hello, Sybil, my love. Kiss. <laughs> Sybil gave birth to her daughter in 1920, while Mary and Matthew welcomed their son George into the world the following year. Edith had Marigold in secrecy not too long after, and Mary, of course, has another bundle of joy on the way. When the series ended, the Earl of Grantham's eldest grandchild was approximately five years old. It would be intriguing if the film jumped ahead several years, shining the spotlight on older versions of Sibby, George, and Marigold. What should Marigold call me? Donk. Oh, <laughs> why not? Everyone else does. She can call me Donk, and every time she does, I'll be reminded of you. Just as the Crawley daughters embrace the modern era, we want to see how the youngest generation evolves with the times. George in particular could grow into an important character, being the heir to Robert's title. Then he said she was on the wall, Paul. Number 2. References to Historical Events Downton Abbey has touched upon historical events from the very first episode when James and Patrick Crawley died on the RMS Titanic, leaving Lord Grantham in search of a new heir. I thought it was supposed to be unsinkable. Every mountain is unclimbable until someone climbs it, so every ship is unsinkable until it sinks. Although everything works out pretty well for the Crawleys in the end, the finale notably took place in 1925, only a few years before the Great Depression hit the UK. I think the more adaptable we are, the more chance we have of getting through. The Crawleys have repeatedly been on the verge of financial ruin, and this may push them over the edge in the movie. Seeing the Crawleys fall on hard times would provide leeway for several promising storylines, perhaps forcing the entire family to join the workforce and even having to let some of their servants go. Is that what you want? To see Matthew a landless peer with a title but no means to pay for it? So I'm just to find a husband and get out of the way. Number one, the Dowager Countess being savage. I'm leaving in the morning, Lady Grantham. I doubt we'll meet again. Do you promise? Dame Maggie Smith won three primetime Emmys for her scene-stealing performance as Dowager Countess of Grantham. Will she win an Oscar for the role next? In any case, the movie had better give Violet Crawley enough screen time. It just wouldn't be Downton Abbey without her sassy, sharp, and at times savage one-liners. Oh, do you think I might have a drink? Oh, I'm so sorry. 
I thought you were a waiter. Since Smith will once again be sharing the screen with Imelda Staunton, another round between Professor McGonagall and Professor Umbridge is also in order. But to question my practices is to question the ministry, and by extension, the minister himself. Smith has notably expressed her reluctance to reprise this role again, joking that Violet was probably too old. She, honestly, she was about, by the time we finished, she must have been 110. <laughs> so I couldn't go on and on and on. If she's ready to retire the character, though, the film could provide a bittersweet send-off for Violet. At my age, one must ration one's excitement. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.